This is an exciting conference, isn't it? I'm so sorry to disturb you to, uh, to interrupt your uh, wonderful talks in the hall, which are why we came here, but let's move on. There will be plenty of space for more talk. So, what we have here is the, the topic named hemp seeds, not only a nutrition source for the future, there's more to it. Not everyone maybe will build a house, but probably each of us can eat hemp products. So we have brought four experts to speak. Two are from the Czech Republic. It's Dr. Pavel Kubu and uh, František Schweda. Then we have two guests from Germany. It is uh, Michael Bida and Florian Pichelmaja. So, let's start. The first person to introduce his uh, short talk before the panel discussion begins is Michael Bida. My name is Michael Bida and I'm from the northern part of Germany, uh, born close to Hamburg, and I work now together with Hunt Farm, whom I'm representing here today as well as a company that is newly formed called Fibermax, which is a joint venture between Hunt Farm and another German entity that I'm part of. <clears throat> and Fibermax is merely uh, being founded to plan a new facility type for hemp processing. So Hunt Farm <clears throat> is one of the pioneers and oldest hemp grower in Germany having um, grown hemp for about 20 years for food and seed um, reproduction. They have as well grown for tea and extraction material and have a lot of experience in not only growing it but as well developing harvesting machinery. So this is the founder of Hunt Farm, Raphael Dulong. Uh, which I need to send the best greetings to everyone in the room who knows Raphael, which is probably 89% of the room. <clears throat> and um, he is still very much motivated to take the hemp industry to the next level. Uh, hemp Farm has a lot of um, competences <clears throat> when it comes to the hemp in general, as I said, from growing, processing of seeds, as well as um, growing for tea and extracts and cannabinoids. So I'm coming now to Fibermax, <clears throat> which is a um, more important topic uh, for today, I think, even though the panel is about seeds, but I need to get this message out here, because in the first panel there was a lot of talk about between um, hemp and getting to the industry. So that's what Fibermax stands for. <clears throat> the uh, joint venture partner in the UK is a large um, manufacturer of pre-manufactured panels for home building of CO2 negative homes. And uh, the German part is uh, Hunt Farm and the other entity. And we are all about the impact that a new type of facility processing hemp can have on the community as well as <clears throat> making a quantum leap possible that is absolutely necessary in order to step up <clears throat> and get the industry to where we need to be in order to attract not only the interest of governments and local governments as well as the farming industry but more importantly the interest of large money and large money doesn't mean someone with a million quid because that's not helping at all we need to talk about money um, up from 100 million onwards in order to get an infrastructure done that is necessary to make, uh, whether it's the concrete industry or the textile industry, understand, yes, now they are forming what is necessary to have a supply chain from field to product. And that supply chain needs to be based on ideas <clears throat> that are taken from the example of Germany, which I always use, uh, large-scale farming 
means 2.5 million hectares of corn is planted and harvested every single year in Germany for biomethane and feedstock. And the approach of harvesting 2.5 million hectares in a time window of eight weeks is exactly the approach that we need to take to make large-scale farming of hemp possible. And I will straight away take the point that was um, earlier asked in terms of monoculture. Industrial farming is monoculture. There is no doubt about it. However, the hemp farming has the ability to <clears throat> support regenerative farming and the new called, so um, called strip farming, which means you have a field of about 100 hectares, which is not unusual at all in Germany, and you're planting two or three crops on that field stripwise depending on how big your machinery is that you're using. And that's what we need to understand. No one in Germany is interested in planting five hectares of hemp because the machinery that is being supplied from the agricultural industry is at least 12 to 16 meter wide, meaning he's driving around one circle done. That is not cost effective for any farmer. So all these impacts are so important to understand if you want to scale up an industry. So we <clears throat> are very much um, in collaboration and what we want to do is really um, have a vertical integrated partnership that ends up with international customers because Fibermax has the ability due to a um, just granted German fund that we are planning a new facility for a throughput of about 100,000 tons of hemp, uh, resulting in about 15,000 hectares of farming. And it is not about producing commodities, it is producing about pre-manufactured uh, products or final products for the market in conjunction with industrial partners that will be uh, linked to that facility. So we have for our planning phase, 20 leading industrial partners, which I won't name yet because um, we need to form and find out who is doing what. Um, we are focusing on a couple of main industrial sectors, which anyone can see here, and there's a lot more to this uh, than what I'm uh, listing. And today, since this panel is about seeds, I focus on the hemp seed market and its opportunities. So we can see in comparison the total harvest of oil seed worldwide. And then you see how very little the hemp seed can bring to this market. So talking about 640 million tons of oil seeds being harvested in comparison to 110,000 tons of hemp seeds, Everyone knows that this doesn't have any impact at all on industrial scale. You know, talking that hemp oil can do technical oils and stuff. <clears throat> we, if we used 110,000 tons for um, food purposes, that would be great. And even that we don't, because we all know there's many European restrictions to get hemp oil as food in the shelves of supermarkets. And there's still lots of hesitation with the big retailers saying, oh, there could be one PPM of THC somewhere, uh, maybe on the bottle outside. So <clears throat> there's tons of opportunities um, using hemp seeds for the plant-based market. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure um, my friend uh, Florian will come to that. So I'm just uh, showing you a couple of uh, graphs that actually show the opportunity that lies in front of us if we scale up. And that's not just on protein and milk. Uh, there's many more to this. You know, the bakery industry is not even in, um, incorporated in this. So, and then uh, a little comparison between hemp and soy. We can all see that uh, soy planting in Europe is um, definitely not solution. However, the soy planting in Europe currently gets in the farming world more support than hemp planting. So how is that? And that's what we need to understand. 
the obstacles that are in front of us are manifold. And we need to understand, first of all, the farmer is the biggest obstacle because he's using his machinery and he doesn't care um, if we come and say hemp is better, if that doesn't fit his machinery supply, he won't buy a new machine for five hectares of hemp. So there is one big obstacle and the soy uh, plant that can be used with any machinery that's already available. So that's one simple reason why soy planting in Europe gets more support than hemp currently in the farming world. So I leave the hemp protein to Florian. A um, couple of examples of what you could do with um, things extracted from the hemp seeds. And that's me done. Many thanks, and I look forward to a great discussion. Uh, thank you, Michael, for a very interesting uh, and visionary talk on the complex impact. We will further debate it after all the uh, individual uh, talks. So let's uh, please uh, go to František Švejda, who is a hemp food innovator and a popular author of uh, cookbooks, and uh, uh, he writes for the uh, magazine Canopy. And uh, also, he's an expert. He's a jack of all trades, František Švejda. Hello. Uh, I'm very happy to take a part on this uh, very interesting panel because uh, hemp food and uh, his uh, properties, uh, this is my really favorite topic. So I would like to start with uh, several general, more general thoughts. Uh, there are uh, a lot of challenges or problems uh, which uh, humankind at the moment facing. One of these problems is uh, so-called lifestyle diseases, or uh, we in Czech Republic uh, using the name, not, not very good name, uh, civilization diseases. These diseases uh, are at the moment the most expensive thing which is in our health insurance system. This is the uh, lead, uh, these uh, diseases result in a high number of uh, hospitalizations, uh, long-term treatments and expensive medical procedures. These results in increasing costs to, for public health care system and health insurance companies. So uh, one of the biggest uh, topic or challenges which uh, humankind in the moment have is uh, to solve a problem of lifestyle disease. There is no doubt that uh, the, this issue is connected with the human endocannabinoid system. I started uh, to work in the area of industrial hemp uh, nine years ago. Uh, I'm working a lot with hemp food and dietary cannabinoids for all my career, so after, let's say, the fascination of canna with cannabinoids, I started to uh, learn more about endocannabinoid system, how it is working, how important this uh, signaling, body signaling system is. And uh, after several years, uh, I really strongly believe in this, that the endocannabinoid system could help us with this so-called lifestyle disease. This endocannabinoid system is, of course, influenced by phytocannabinoids, but uh, maybe more important fact is that the essential for endocannabinoid system are fatty acids. And the source, one of the best source of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are really essential for balance of endocannabinoid system, is hemp seed. As I told you, uh, hemp seed at the moment, it's really perfect, very 
good designed package of uh, important nutritional substances like source of protein, uh, fiber, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, everything what at the moment is missing in so-called Western diet. Western diet, which is uh, a lot of uh, ultra-processed food, a lot of red meat, a lot of saturated fats, could be one of the biggest problems and one of the reasons why we are suffering with uh, lifestyle disease. Uh, low consumption of natural food, and I could say low consumption of hemp seeds, <laughs> is, is uh, one of the reasons, or could be a way in the future, how to solve this civilization disease. Hemp seeds represent a, a, a very affordable and naturally well-designed package of nutritionally significant substances that are practically ideal for helping us with the issue of lifestyle diseases. In connection, of, uh, uh, in connection with the uh, endocannabinoid system and what we know about the uh, balance of endocannabinoid system and the function of endocannabinoid system, we need to say that uh, it should be supported to uh, for uh, our uh, for our European people to consume more hemp seed and hemp seed products. Uh, here are uh, some uh, benefits uh, which could uh, result from a higher cons consumption of hemp seed: uh, heart health, healthy skin, uh, brain health metabolic health, immune system, disease prevention. All this is connected with lifestyle diseases, endocannabinoid system, and our current lifestyle. And at the end, uh, as I always say, eating hemp food, this is your best retirement plan, because it uh, doesn't matter if you will live 90 years. Current medicine is able to keep you alive for 100 years, but it depends how your, how your last 30 years of this 100 years will look like. If you will be somewhere in a bed and uh, under medicine or if you will be active and healthy. So, Good strategy uh, in your lifestyle and eating hemp is your, one of your best retirement plans. And I think that uh, this topic should be also communicated with health insurance companies because uh, higher consumption of these healthy food, especially hemp seeds, could uh, save a lot of money in this health insurance system. So, uh, eat hemp. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Frankishek, for your uh, life-saving presentation. Uh, uh, that's really uh, so, so much to talk about later on. So let's move on to Florian Pichelmeyer from Signature Products and he will again go deeper and deeper into the hemp seed, into this uh, game changer in multiple industries. Florian. Thank you. Thank you also for the invitation and also I have to mention that uh, I've never heard it so well like how someone pronounced my last name who is not German speaking so perfect <laughs> also thank you for the really nice presentations before um, I can underline all what you said um, hemp is a really good food um, but so let's look into that so first of all what you can expect uh, from my small presentation today I give you really a short introduction about signature products so you just know who we are what we do and then afterwards I go into the hemp seed applications 
So what we do is, on the one side, is uh, contract cultivation. So we do not um, ha like grow hemp by ourselves, but we do work together with farmers in Europe, but mostly, mostly mainly based in Germany or some countries around. And we also offer different services, such as white and private labeling, for example, uh, if you want to have a hemp seed oil in your own brand, that's what we offer. So we do not have our own consumer brand. Um, we also help a lot of um, like bigger companies who are not in the industrial hemp sector who want to understand hemp. So we offer consulting services as well as what we have done, especially the last two years, a lot to some bigger agriculture companies. I think this is really important because we are all here together and not all of us, but most of us working in the hemp industry. And this is great to be here together and talk about it and educate ourselves. But I think it's also really, really important that we go out with that knowledge we gain today and other conferences and try to convince them and educate them about hemp. Because at the end of the day, if we all just pushing each other and we're like, yeah, hemp is great, that's good. But we need to tell others also about it because otherwise we will not create a big market for that. And this is what it's all about. Then we also trade the raw materials. So after the country cultivation, of course, we have a lot of hemp. We not let it die there. <laughs> we uh, try to trade it into different industries. We focus on the upper part of the plant, which means more like the seeds, the leaves, and maybe the flowers, but more the seeds. And we trade this to the food, feed, and the cosmetic industry mainly. We also do R&D. I will talk about a small project which we won this, this year, together with the um, German government, but also with two big German companies. And what we also do now is another project where we're focusing on the recreational cannabis market, which comes to Germany. So let's look into our projects. We're working to, with a couple of universities together to um, yeah, get better. Because I know, first of all, I'm, we're not good at R&D on ourselves. We don't have the people, we don't have the money to, to hire 15 people, 20 people who can just focus on that. Um, and also when it's about reputation, when it's about talking with big companies outside of the hemp industry, if a hemp company comes to them, it's a little bit sometimes difficult, as you know, um, because of our reputation in general. But if a university, if it's university backed up, it helps a lot. And this actually um, is one thing I really can underline is um, I think one reason why we have success, like at Signature Products, is because we're working together with universities. It's helped me a lot to get contacts to the food industry, for example, because they're listening to me, because I can tell this is not just I'm telling you, this is backed up by science. So working together with University of Bonn, the business school Pforzheim, that's why I studied. Uh, I studied business law there, but nothing to do with which I will do now. Uh, the University of Hohenheim and also the Fraunhofer Institute. I want to give you a small introduction about the project with the University of Bonn um, after that slide. Um, as already mentioned as well, I'm also, we're doing also a lot of lobbyism work. And uh, one part of that is also I'm representing the European Industrial Health Association, where I'm in the management board. Let's look into the uh, project which we won like actually one and a half months ago together with the German government. Um, in this project, which started on the 1st of September, we are working together with Rügenwalder Mühle. Most of you probably don't know that, but it's actually the number one company in Germany for plant-based food. So you see them in every supermarket existing in Germany. And uh, they also already launched this year in July a product with hemp protein, um, a plant-based meat product. Uh, this is really, really good because it's the first time in Germany that we have in every supermarket available a hemp, a plant-based meat product made of hemp. Then we're working together with Sutzuka, which is number one and number two worldwide company regarding sugar. Uh, they have a lot of um, fields available in Europe and worldwide, which is of course one important point because if we uh, want to have, ha if we want to apply it uh, on the market, the people uh, like the companies also need hemp, so we need someone who can scale it. As mentioned, Five hectares are not enough to <laughs> supply the whole hemp food market. And then we have some other companies who support us in this regarding the extraction or extrusion. So we got one million euro in this project. Um, just want to give you a show all of you. We had uh, the signature, we are leading the, the project. We, we applied for that. We do the economic uh, calculations and development of hemp food products. Then other two companies um, improving the process and also develop different food products. So, but why do we do that? As already mentioned, uh, we have different problems to solve in the hemp food industry or the hemp industry. Um, we know here that hemp is great. We're all talking about it. We, we have different applications. But we need companies to apply it. So either we can apply it on our own, if you have the money for that, if you have the contacts, if, you have the, like, uh, if you're patient enough to educate the market. This is one way to go. The other way to go is to search for big companies who are already a big brand on the market, trying to convince them to use hemp and then um, then they roll it out. And 
I found out I'm not good for the first uh, one because we don't have enough money. <laughs> we don't have, and so we went for the second one and we tried to convince basically big, big companies. And we did. We're already working with big companies together where we supply hemp protein. But one big other issue is, which we still have in industry and is one of the main problems is hemp is right now too expensive compared to the other proteins available. When you compare it to soy or pea or other proteins, we cannot compete right now at least. Um, and this is one big issue. So we need to solve this. So one way to solve this is we have better seeds where we get, for example, a better, better harvest. Or on the other side, if we have seeds uh, or if we process it better, if we can uh, produce cheaper. And this is one, one thing which we do in this government project. We try to optimize the hemp production. This means we are trying to go through the whole process after we harvest and try to improve the hemp seed peeling, the oil pressing, the hemp press cake in general, what we can do with that, and also the extraction methods. And then, of course, we try to apply it um, on different food products and then send it out again to bigger food companies. That's everything about the project which we are doing. If you want to know more, you can, of course, afterwards ask me more. Uh, what else you can do with hemp seeds? Um, we supply a lot as well the cosmetic market. One investor in our company since 2020 is Crema. Crema is the biggest hemp, uh, the biggest hemp, not feed, not hemp, it's the biggest feed supplier in Germany. So we work with them together to also get hemp more into the feed industry in Germany. And then also they supply um, a lot the cosmetic industry, they're a supplier as we are, and with them together we're developing also products to, can, to then not develop our own brand, but to supply, supply to existing brands who are already on the market and giving them hemp and giving the opportunity and understanding what it's good for. So mentioned cosmetic and pet food is what we do with them. Fuel, I want to say here that we, we don't have at Signature Products much experience about it, but we're in contact with companies who are actually doing research about using hemp oil as fuel. Then also regarding paints and vanishes, so what we know companies also paper, we do know that you normally use the, the fibers, is what we're aware of, but still some companies are researching about using parts of the hemp seeds for the paper production and also textiles as it's normally used from the fiber, but also here they're trying to find applications from the hemp seed. Um, same as plastic, lubricants is already a company working together, they're going to uh, launch something, a big lubricant uh, brand going to launch it with, with hemp seed oil. A soil conditioner, but also what we do know that in the fishing industry it's used already a lot, um, if you're not aware of that yet. Um, why cosmetic? Just uh, one example, and then I'm also done with my presentation. Um, a lot of companies they're using for skin moisturizer, acne treatment, hair care, also antioxidant. And a little overview about my company, just some couple of uh, people of my team that you know a little bit how, who's our background. So we have, um, if, if you're coming from the cannabis industry, you maybe know Wheat Maps. So the, the founder of this company invested into us and also then Crema, which is the, the feed industry, the cosmetic industry supplier. And then we have uh, Nateco, if you maybe know them from the CO2 extraction from Germany. Their ex-CEO, Andreas Futzig, also is invested into our company. Yeah, that's everything about me and the company. Thank you, Florian, for sharing your vision. And now let's uh, move to something that you totally do not expect. A breakthrough discovery that is stemming from hemp seed. Please, Dr. Pavel Kubu. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very nice to follow up what else uh, we can do with hemp seeds. <laughs> As Florian, uh, make the bridge. Uh, so far it looks uh, we will be able to make a uh, uh, artificial uh, blood plasma uh, uh, product which uh, Plasma for People is the company uh, uh, developing and owning uh, uh, the IP how to isolate uh, hemp protein adestin to a pharmacological purity in the original 3D structure. Uh, and, uh, in fact, the uh, IP starts somewhere on isolating the adestin up to uh, 80%. Uh, and then uh, don't ask me, because I don't understand it too, how the chemical processes are made uh, that the protein simply does not denaturate. We all know what is it, protein denaturation, that when we fried eggs, uh, and uh, as the uh, egg protein gets either white or yellow, 
that's where it of course loses its natural uh, functions which are related to the structure. Um, also I should uh, mention that uh, uh, blood plasma is the most limited resource uh, the healthcare industry is having. Uh, there is uh, in fact a shortage of two-thirds of the actual plasma demand, blood plasma demand uh, globally, which is not covered because so far we are able to get the blood, the blood plasma only from healthy volunteers, which go not to donate blood. They have to go donate plasma, which is more complex, more time consuming, and how to say it. Uh, uh, of course, it's, it's not even fine to donate normal blood, but you are done in 30 minutes with needle in your hand. If you donate blood plasma, you are not done within hours with two needles in your veins, at least. So, uh, it's in fact summarizing why it's so limited resource. And uh, I should also add, uh, because uh, uh, to work uh, with human plasma in a clinical practice, uh, it's not common even for physicians. So when I was uh, reading uh, after some time from my studies the uh, product information on blood plasma, if I would not have there written it's a human plasma, uh, I would think that someone is trying to uh, persuade me that something like uh, life of water exists, which in fact is the human plasma. That's what it is. That's the water which enables the circulation of all the blood cells, of all the hormones, immunoglobulins, and its distribution through the body to the tissue and up to the cells. And the most important part, which is enabling the homeostasis, is the blood protein uh, albumin, which we are planning to replace uh, in the solution by adestin. There are multiple benefits of uh, the adestin as it's uh, uh, protein six times larger than albumin. Uh, so it can be potentially used also in situations where you can even help the patient with uh, uh, human plasma because it's contraindicated to follow with albumin and it's basically a lot of the acute situations where uh, another uh, specific term, permeability of the blood capillars are changing, what in fact means that the uh, transportation of albumin is so already uh, differentiated that it's uh, escaping from the blood circulation to, uh, uh, to the tissues and worsening the edemas. So far it looks adestin is in fact having the features which would uh, enable its application also in the situation where blood plasma is already contraindicated. But there are uh, other potential uh, benefits uh, also as a blood expander. Some of you might have uh, heard about these uh, intravenous products. They are uh, uh, mostly starch or some other complex uh, uh, sugar uh, based. So they are also having uh, multiple, uh, multiple issues which uh, Restin uh, is uh, improving and that's the lack of protein uh, creating in fact higher burden on kidneys uh, with the actual blood expanders which the protein com uh, or large protein based expander uh, organic uh, can prevent. And last but not least, also as an intravenous uh, nutrition, where uh, as of right now we've got uh, multiple options, again uh, sugar based, there are also some uh, isolated amino acids can be mixed for intravenous application, uh, but Edestin in fact brings uh, all the amino acids which uh, the human body needs on a uh, uh, daily interval. And uh, uh, it's also having the amino acids in, let's say, very compatible ratio to the real needs of human bodies. In other words, those amino acids which human body needs a lot are rich in adestin, but it contains also those amino acids which we do not need potentially sometimes on daily basis, but we need them in some 
let's say, mission critical processes like uh, creation of immunoglobulins or creation of a specific enzymes when a body is in some health disbalance situation. We've already conducted uh, extensive tests on animals, uh, which in fact uh, confirm the hypothesis that uh, uh, this uh, natural uh, protein can be applied uh, intravenously uh, into the mammalian circulation and does not uh, create any uh, serious uh, adverse uh, issues as even the uh, uh, even the follow-up confirmations of uh, immunological tissues of the tested animals confirmed that there was no significant activation of immune system. But we are already using the available advanced tools to uh, shorten the time to get uh, approved uh, testing on humans. Uh, we've conducted extensive AI modeling done on AI trained for biomedical research and development called Ontoside. Uh, in collaboration with uh, German company Chain Pharma. And uh, among revealing the uh, complex 3D structure of the, uh, of the molecule and helping to better uh, estimate what will be various uh, um, features and, and how it will act into a condition of human body, also in acute situations with like high fever uh, of the patient or... Uh, uh, different uh, permeability uh, indicators of capillars. Uh, it shows that not just through its size, uh, but uh, also we, uh, thanks to its uh, uh, combination of beta sheets and uh, the overall structure, the adestin is uh, uh, in the blood circulation able to replace uh, or better set uh, collaborate because of course it's not the goal to uh, get the patient uh, blood free uh, you always need to <laughs> get something compatible with what the patient already has uh, in circulations uh, and there it uh, there it looks that uh, uh, the adestin is having uh, a very compatible uh, also um, uh, physical and chemical uh, components uh, it's uh, already break down to three subgroups uh, where in fact the uh, arresting three uh, seems to be uh, the most closest also from the antigenicity characteristic which in fact uh, is the indicator how the immune system can react against this molecule. And uh, we all know that uh, even we do not have the unified uh, type of blood uh, where again the the um, uh, uh, immunocharacteristic uh, immuno of different blood types are in fact preventing to use the blood across all patients. Uh, you have to really match make the proper type of the blood before the uh, blood can be applied. This applies for blood plasma too, of course. Uh, and uh, potentially with the organic replacement, uh, all this issue can uh, be uh, diminished in the practice because uh, logically uh, the uh, naturally uh, produced uh, protein uh, is not, for example, even contaminated with uh, uh, various uh, blood transferable diseases like prion diseases. And uh, now maybe to the most important to today's audience, how the, how the production process uh, is already happening. Uh, uh, the reason why we are using hemp seeds is obvious because adestin is most concentrated in hemp seeds. You can find it also in rice, soya uh, and, and potentially other cereals or food plants, uh, but the concentration there usually does not uh, exceed single percent. So hemp seeds is the natural uh, richest uh, source of this protein, uh, seems to be very compatible to uh, uh, main uh, human blood plasma protein albumin. Then the extraction and uh, separations of oils uh, is already happening in patented process because it's uh, in fact all the uh, separation processes are very sensitive to keep the adestin in its original 3D structure and don't denaturate it. Um, then we are again in patented process uh, running through separation of husk and 
purification and crystallization at the stable temperature. And in fact, the end product is a, a very, um, very mild dust, which uh, can be stored basically forever. We are already running like eight years of uh, uh, stability testing in a storage and uh, uh, the actuary test shows that if of course it's properly stored in vacuum and in some stable temperature, uh, it's not undergoing any structural changes. Uh, and uh, when the potential uh, replacement of blood plasma in some of that uh, potential indications uh, will be need to use uh, then, the, then the dust uh, with the purified resin is just makes uh, in comparison uh, like 6% to 94% uh, of saline solution and you are in fact getting uh, the, the liquid part of human plasma uh, which also consists uh, from 92% uh, water, 6% of albumin uh, and the rest 2% are immunoglobulins, hormones, minerals and so on. The project is as of right now in the uh, uh, seat A. Uh, we are getting a little bit delayed uh, in a frame of months uh, because uh, we've uh, reached out the uh, typical issue of uh, developing uh, medications based on uh, different hemp products, as similar issues are uh, with various phytocannabinoids too. Uh, there was no laboratory having a certified uh, laboratory testing processes uh, to analyze how long adestin stays in its original uh, 3D structure uh, in human plasma. So we are now waiting for one of the Australian laboratory which was closest to have such method certified when they finally make their certification so we can start the stability test and get the proper test quality results uh, on the level of medication testing so we can use these data for later market authorization. And uh, last but not least, just get you uh, inside how big are the markets uh, or business opportunities. Uh, uh, our uh, estimates for uh, plasma organic uh, just in the segment of uh, plas blood plasma replacement uh, it's about 280 million euros and again just one third of this demand is covered by the actual uh, supply of uh, human blood plasma. Uh, but, uh, in the area of uh, parental liquids where either the plasma uh, expanders or the uh, intravenous nutrition uh, based on proteins is fitting into, our very conservative estimate is uh, that uh, uh, restin based products can be reaching uh, 3 billion per year. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Pavel. So um, the dream has come true. We will be able to inject cannabis into our bloodstream yes. in the form of adestin, a protein extracted from the hemp seed. This is so wonderful and it will save lives. So, please, any questions? Thanks, uh, once again, me. Uh, uh, first question is uh, for uh, Michael Bieder, if I said it correct. Uh, how many seats are you uh, av available uh, to sell uh, to any customer? It's uh, one, ten, fifty tons, or this is the question. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for the question. Once the facility is um, fully developed and obviously built first, and we are currently in the planning phase, then that facility can process from 15,000 hectares the available seeds, which then depends on another very important topic so that I discussed already with someone today, is the development of genetics of hemp. So what we are currently seeing, a little comparison out of the farming world, um, a couple of hundred years ago, the cereal crop, wheat, was harvested about 800 kilos per hectare. The world record of wheat harvest today is 17 tons per hectare. So a slight increase. If we do what we can with our um, highly advanced genetical 
influx and um, science, then we should be able in 10 years' time to harvest on average three and a half tons of hemp seeds per hectare, meaning 15,000 hectares times three to make it easy is 45,000 tons of input in the factory and then split into different fractions of what is necessary, whether we make protein or whether we extract adestine, uh, will then be obviously <clears throat> a question of quality and um, understanding and analyzing which seeds do have which properties. And I think this is another important topic and <clears throat> I really appreciate all the presentations uh, here on this board today showing the huge potential that we have with hemp while we're scaling up. Because <clears throat> what Pavel said, the three billion um, dollar euro market of his new development is only available if there is enough hemp seed available in order to make this um, a possibility. So <clears throat> we really need to understand that investors will come on board seeing this massive opportunity when we step up and say, okay, yes, let's build an industry and step out of romance of hemp. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank, I, thank may, you so much. I, I received uh, meantime because some of us forgetting these numbers, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I asked my colleagues uh, what would it need to uh, produce just the gap of 100 liter, uh, uh, million liters, which is missing as of now, and it's 6,222 tons of hemp seed will be needed. So hopefully the investors will start to understand that there are large opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the second question was uh, for your colleague. Uh, you, you said 6,000 and something tons for one milliliter? No, for the missing liters of... missing 100 million liters per liter. Ah, okay, okay. My English is not this. But the, 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 the second question was... Uh, you, you, you mentioned the CO2 extraction, uh, you, you extract, if it's not the secret, you extract the, the husks or the whole, whole seeds, uh, or you, you try to separate the oil from it, seeds? It, it's definitely it. not a secret, I just don't know it. Uh, okay. I think this part is not a secret because it does not change the chemical structure. There are some mechanical processes, how, uh, you know, the, uh, the seed is decorticated, then, you know, the... Uh, the oils are removed and, and purified the protein, but really I don't know these details. Okay, so. thank, thank you so much. <laughs> so many questions. Excellent. Um, before I ask my question, was it 6,000 or 60,000? No, 6,000. Six. Okay. Um, my other question is not about that, but, um, and, but it is for you, uh, Pavel. Um, and wherever else, but uh, what, what steps remain, sorry if this is a really ignorant question, I feel like it is, but what steps remain before we see this plasma used in hospitals? Market authorization of uh, intravenous medication, which uh, that, that, that was also interesting interaction with the on-site artificial intelligence, uh, which for example clearly told us that uh, with some of the clinical testing steps, uh, we have just five countries globally where is at least some experience between physician. What does it mean to certify the intravenous application? And Czech Republic is not among those countries. So how 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 will this? Y you are asking when it's gonna be here done. <laughs> Yeah, well, not, not when. That, but, that's, but. That's, that's a very fair question, but the best answer is when it's done. There is no like legal uh, timeline or you, you have to count with unpredictable simply. So to be giving you right now any like two, five years, also it needs significant amount of uh, investments, which basically in it's not that there is some like, one level increase, there is quite common in between the different human testing stops. The costs are raising exponentially. And until we raise it and spend it, we can predict what the overall time will take. In general, 
approval of a new medication takes something between 20 and 30 years. And this is intravenous. But at the same time, we are already working with tools which should significantly shrink uh, the timeline. But we are, of course, speaking in years to come. So it's in the beginning of that process. Uh, it's not the beginning. The beginning is to isolate the molecule and pick the molecule, which can take 15 years if you look to uh, normal medication development. We've got already animal tests. We've got already extent uh, literature research. We've got in silico modelings, which are replacing some step with in vitro modelings and so on. So I would say we are somewhere maybe second, third. Thank you. Uh, uh, Pavel, thank you very much for the interesting lecture. But uh, I have still one question, one technical question. Why do you choose globuli from the hemp seed? Why didn't you use the albumin fraction of the hemp seed, which is much be better soluble and uh, more similar, probably, the blood albumin? Can you explain me why? Why is globulin is better for this purposes than uh, One of the main reasons we were uh, solving it just recently uh, is the molecular weight, which is significantly uh, bigger than albumin. Okay. Because in many acute situations, so-called peripheral permeability of capillars is changing, and albumin, the, the, the human or artificially recombinant albumin administered is contraindicated because once the permeability changes and we do not have like immediate diagnostic methods to know that the peripheral permeability has changed, you in clinics recognize it that the person is getting in a protein-based uh, edemas, which are much worse than uh, uh, just um, uh, water-based edemas. And uh, in this situation, the idestin so far, based on the modeling looks, that through to its big structure, will not be escaping, as the natural albumin escapes anyway. So in fact, as of right now, the uh, intensive medicine does not have any tool to help the body restore the homeostasis, because once the permeability changes, you can even administer the human or recombinant albumin and you do not have other protein or other type of tool to quickly replace the protein part of the plasma and get the body back from the pathological spiral, which is in fact just making more albumin to escape out of the circulation and increasing the homeostasis uh, decay. Contrary to administering larger molecule, which is having the potential to restore the oncotic pressure and stay in circulation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what is the difference between adestin, adestin obtained from other plant sources like legumes or other families? So why, why do you Pardon me, like sorry, sorry, once again. I, I uh, what is the difference between adestin obtained from other plant sources from legume family? So why did you select it? From other what? Sorry, I'm not Legumes. understanding. Legumes. From legume family, other plants. Aluštěniny. So why did you select hemp for that? Because it's the most, uh, the, there is the highest concentration. So uh, you do not need so big volume to isolate the result volume of edestin. Uh, in the other, in the other cereals or you know rice and so on, as far as I know, it's maximally single-digit percent. Mm -hmm. And in hemp seeds, it's uh, as you saw it between 45 to 55 percent. I don't have any question, but uh, I need to reach um, Pavel and Florian presentation. Could you send? possible they, they, they will be probably available anyway uh, somewhere yeah. ah, okay thank yeah you. for sure <laughs> thank you what a company okay hi i'm andre from alcos bioprod romania uh, for um, 
biocide you can count on us on Romania because at the moment we own roughly 100 hectares of hemp seeds and next year will be available for everybody. We try to expand much as we can. We are seed producer and uh, multiplication of the seed. Thank you. Let me just continue with the recounting numbers because in fact to cover the 6,000 tons, it will need 10,370 hectares. I know, I know. Cultivate it. <laughs> so. We manage this year two tons per hectare. Great. Yeah, irrigated, of course. But Romanian Jubileo Sequian is a breed. Can, can, I, can I ask which uh, type of uh, hemp seeds you grow? Which, uh, which variety? I'm from Romania, Alcos yeah. Bioprod Farm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, seed it is Jubileo Sequian. Okay. Unfortunately, I have actually skipped the, the, the expert debate, which was supposed to precede this uh, uh, public debate. So maybe we can ask the experts if they have uh, some counter questions, challenges for each other. Okay, I will start with uh, Frantisek. Um, so I think there is obviously um, <clears throat> a very interesting topic saying that hemp, eating hemp seeds can um, improve the health of people. And then we have got the other expert here saying if the health is compromised, we have the solution with hemp and sort that out. So basically two people having the same solution for the health insurance industry. Um, and I think this indicates already the future potential that has not been seen a hundred years ago. And I think this should lead us to, again, um, and maybe I'm more visionary than other people, but <clears throat> if you look fast forward 50 years, and then imagine what the hemp industry could look like, and then base all your planning or what we want to achieve together in 50 years' time. That is probably a very good basis to start today and talk to people and not talking about, yeah, you know, let's do some pilots and stuff like this. No, let's do what the industry did, and I refer always to the um, steel industry in 1913 in America. The steel industry in 1913 in America said, if we carry on what we're doing currently, we have a steel mill here and then we have a done there and they're all very tiny and it's all very expensive. You know, this will never be a world market. So let's come together, put it all in one basket and say, the steel industry needs to be cheap and high volume. That's what they did. They convinced the bankers to put a billion dollars in there and then they said, done. This way to go. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to understand how big is the market in 50 years' time. Is it 1 billion, 3 billion, or 100 billion? And I can already say that the hemp market, already visible in Europe, is extending far 10 billion easily. And not, it's not the American billions, it's like the European billions, which is actually three zeros more. <clears throat> and therefore, I think it is very important that we get the mindset right, because everything starts with mindset if you want to achieve big goals. Well, that's the starting point, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll follow to uh, add that uh, through uh, the research and development uh, of potential adestin-based uh, plasma replacement, uh, we are getting more and more confirmations of the totally unique uh, nutritional value uh, of the adestin as such, uh, which uh, thanks to František, we are now uh, doing a pharmacology archaeological research, <laughs> in fact, because uh, there was still 1938 uh, 
uh, OTC medication uh, containing uh, adestin or purified adestin to the level they were able to purify it at that time, which was probably not more than 85%, uh, but we'll see once we get to the registration documentations. And uh, uh, that product called uh, Adezyme, combining adestin and enzyme, was in fact successfully uh, used to treat uh, child tuberculosis. Uh, some of you might know the famous uh, uh, cannabis as medicine uh, proceedings from the, uh, which uh, was led by Professor Kabelik and uh, there's a lot of uh, other first description of interesting cannabis bioactivities. Uh, but one of the studies featured there and effect confirmed is uh, this uh, treatment of uh, tuberculosis in child patients, which just confirms how unique is, in fact, the combination of bioactive compounds in the hemp seeds. Because, of course, the kids were not getting just purified edestin, they were also getting uh, some of the uh, omega acids. Uh, and because they were basically getting overdosed by edestin uh, and uh, hemp seeds products, uh, their uh, body was able to restore its uh, regeneration uh, procedures up to the level to treat itself from the tuberculosis. So, uh, and uh, you know, in, in, in medicine it works the kind of unwritten rule that uh, physician uh, treats uh, and nature heals. And this is in fact one of the evidence how the nature can be really healing and how food is important source of the healing power, let's say, uh, which the human body needs. Uh, and I just want to also um, uh, uh, confirm that uh, the actual burden of diseases in all, and not just developed, but some of the so-called developing countries are uh, having even more demand as of right now for healthy food. In Africa, there's big outbreak of junk food diabetes to onset. There's pandemic happening right now compared to the numbers or epidemiological numbers uh, in developed countries. And it's all because of uh, low quality, high volume foods, uh, rich in sugar, uh, small in proteins. Uh, and uh, in the aging society, it's already clear that non-healthcare insurance or other, or, or other healthcare payer will be able to su sustain the uh, exponentially growing cost of providing the key care in the aging society if the society will not start better care of themselves. And we are again in a complex and healthy food where all the self-care in fact starts. Yes, uh, let me just point out that the mentioned research on tuberculosis and the conference took place in this country in the year 19, uh, 1954, uh, 70 years ago. Uh, so, so much about the lack of a vision. My last question for this panel, I hope uh, uh, I will try to uh, connect this debate with the uh, Ask, uh, uh, by the way, book of uh, eating hemp is really great, so if you didn't read, <laughs> go and find out. Uh, the, 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 the question is, uh, you, you, you have great experience about uh, hemp seed and eating. Uh, uh, what is, for your opinion, uh, the highest safe amount of hemp seed oil, like the daily base? Uh, technically, uh, we are talking about food. So there are no uh, <laughs> safe amounts, uh, something like that. There are some recommended daily income of uh, fats or of proteins or etc. So, uh, uh, for the hemp seed oil is a very important ratio of uh, fatty acids, which is uh, very essential for the balancing function of our body and endocannabinoid system. So this ratio uh, in uh, hemp seed oil is very good, or almost perfect. It is uh, one 
uh, one, two, three uh, for omega six and omega three. It's, it's almost ideal because everything what is uh, one to one or one to five uh, for human body is, is very good. So uh, you do not uh, uh, need to think about how much hemp seed oil you should con uh, consume, but you have to uh, check how much total fats you consume and the ratio of individual fatty acids. Thank you so much. So uh, I, maybe I, I read uh, uh, two or three years ago a very interesting article from uh, two Czech uh, uh, physicians and pharmacologists, and uh, they told in this article, which I uh, agree, that a very good uh, uh, daily dose of hemp seed oil is uh, about 15 milliliters, which is uh, depends on the size, but uh, one or two tablespoons daily, and if you will take uh, 30 milliliters daily, you could uh, observe uh, observe it. Uh, it works similar like some medicines. Yeah. So therapeutic dose of hemp seed oil starts on the 30 milliliters a day. And with regards to protein, there's. Uh uh, let's say even more complicated to discuss the potential overdose because uh, I think as of right now if you look to uh, some physiological uh, summaries there is typically written that the daily need of protein is X to twice X. What, typ what typically says if we have such broad intervals that in fact we don't have or the need of the body is changing so uh, profoundly that it sometimes needs two times more than when it does not need. <laughs> and to identify exactly what changes, like for example, definitely if a uh, uh, body uh, fights the viral infection, it might need twice as much when healthy status, but it might need 10 more times of some uh, uh, of some essential amino acid, which uh, we which to get supply in normal food is a kind of very complex exercise. Uh, I don't know if you ever read the list of suggested foods to keep uh, all the income of 21 uh, amino acids, which we need to build uh, protein structures. It's a very rich uh, menu which to, you know, hold on the daily basis from all the different resources is always more complex than if you can uh, has as a kind of background supply in your food, the hemp protein, which is in fact uh, uh, having all those. And it's already featured in that uh, proceeding we were discussing here that physicians that time understand very well the nutritional values uh, of adestin. Thank you. Um, I'm not... I, sorry, oh. I, I quickly want to add something um, from personal experience and um, answer your question again in daily recommendation because I think that's referring to the um, German Institute of Risk Management, as we call it. Um, I think it's um, completely something different, but anyway, <clears throat> that's a political subject. So um, they recommend that, first of all, you have to be an adult in order to consume two tablespoons a day. So no um, pregnant people, no um, children up to 12 years. Um, so that's one thing that still is an issue on the market. And secondly, I want to talk about some personal experience. For the last six years, I'm eating on a very daily basis, and I really mean it, um, definitely more than two tablespoons of uh, hemp seed oil, plus an additional amount of whole hemp seeds. And I can say I can't see any side effects on the negative side, but I can see tons of positive effects. So that's just a personal experience. Yeah. Th thank you for saying that, because I and my family, we are eating a similar quantity of hemp seed oil or hemp seeds a day. And uh, I also did not recognize any 
side effect and I see only positive effect on my body. And uh, last year or last two years, I lost 10 kilograms and I'm feeling better than in 25 years <laughs> now. Yes, um, I'm not in the medical field, but um, I would like to know if the, I don't know if my question is appropriate either, but I'd like to know um, if the hip plasma, will it be compatible to all blood types? Yes, because it does not have the immunoglobulins which are making the these compatibilities. It, it's also vegan compatible, as someone said, and uh, more importantly, uh, it can potentially be used as a plasma replacement for Jehovah Witnesses or those kinds of churches which are regretting any blood transfusion, because this is not a blood transfusion. It's not coming for another, even animal, not just human. It's totally natural. Uh, sorry. No, totally plant-based. <laughs> Hi. So my question um, is for Pavel. It's uh, would collaboration with large pharmaceutical companies accelerate possibly the process of bringing this plasma to market, or do you think that could be prejudicial to the? Uh, to uh, there is no uh, easy uh, answer on that. Uh, despite it might look like a logic solution, it can also bury the project for decades. Uh, mm -hmm. We've saw that in multiple other, j just the famous antiverotic uh, treatment uh, developed in Czech Republic, uh, the uh, new antivirotics for HIV treatment. Uh, they were in fact lying uh, in the uh, pharma company wardrobes or sorry storages for more than decade untouched and that's why the research team which invented the molecules uh, was able to exercise so-called callback option for the IP but in fact they were starting from the scratch 15 years later uh, when they already think pharma company which they sold the IP to will invest into the market authorization. Thank you. Uh, I have more practical question as you were talking about eating uh, oil and the seeds every day. What about the quality of that oil? Because due to oxidation process, sometimes I'm not really sure when I buy my oil from like local supermarket, is it fresh enough? Do you press like every day for your like really high quality and uh, fresh oil to eat or how you make this? <laughs> oxidation of hemp seed oil uh, is, could be a problem. Uh, this oil should be uh, treated well. Uh, during the production process and should be packed in a protection atmosphere. And uh, if you have it uh, at home, uh, maybe uh, it's better to keep it in a fridge, not, uh, not to have it uh, on your kitchen, to, to have it in a cold uh, conditions and uh, to, uh, to eat it uh, as soon as possible. So I personally do not have problem uh, to uh, to consume a 250 milliliters bottle in let's say few days or in one week. So it, it's okay. But, but to have it open uh, in a warm uh, conditions uh, more than two weeks could be risky. But if that happens and you cannot use that oil uh, for consumption, you can st keep it and uh, let the water evaporate and then use it as uh, paint for the production of wood, you know, for your furniture. So don't dump your oil. It's always good. Or lubricant. Or lubricant. Thank you, František. You are thinking of everything. 